many filmmakers may not have all of the ideal professional gear that you might want. So on today's show, I'm going to share my top 10 tricks for faking it, taking bad video and making it work. Trick number one, light. Simply having good light is often the difference between amateur and professional looking video. You can buy clamp lights or work lights at a hardware store, or build your own powerful light like I did. But if you don't have decent lighting, trick number two is use the sun. It's free. And maybe you want to shoot during what photographers call the golden hour. The hour right after sunrise or right before sunset, when shadows are softened. And if you find yourself with shadows you don't want, find something white or reflective to bounce the light. But assuming you didn't have good light, trick number three is knowing how to use color correction to salvage a dark shot. Start by lifting the highlights, but if there's too much contrast, try raising the midtones. You'll notice this washes out the image, but if you drop the shadows and raise the color saturation a little, it's a usable shot. Sure, there's some noise grain, but that's just what happens when you shoot dark video. Also, if your white balance was off while shooting, you should be able to boost your blue or yellow to somewhat correct it. And if you just can't seem to get the colors right, maybe just go black and white. Trick number four. If you don't have a tripod, maybe use a quarter inch screw and a string for DIY stabilization. Trick number five. If you end up with shaky footage, try a stabilization effect. You might be surprised how well it works. Or try slowing down the footage, which often makes it look more fluid. If you're shooting an interview or a web show like this, trick number six is handy. Shoot in the highest resolution you can. If I shoot in 1080 but edit in 720, instead of getting jump cuts like this, I can zoom in the footage and cover up my edits, making it look like I'm shooting with two cameras. Trick number seven. If you don't have a prime lens, sometimes it's hard to capture shallow depth of field. But with many zoom lenses, if you back up and zoom all the way in, you'll find it's easier to blur your background or accomplish rack focus. But if you're too far away from your subject and only have an on-camera mic, you won't get good audio. Trick number eight is to shoot as close as possible. If your actors can deliver their lines the same way each time, you can match up the close-up audio with wider shots. If your audio is distant and quiet, there is a chance that you can save it. Trick number nine is to boost the volume, which unfortunately will introduce noise. But many audio and video editing programs have noise filters, which can help you identify the noise and remove it. If that doesn't work, trick number 10 is your last option. ADR, as it's called in the filmmaking industry, is the re-recording of dialogue. It happens a lot in movies, and you can do it too. Let your actor hear the original take. Let your actor hear the original take. And then try to match up the audio in a better recording environment. It's a slow process though, so always try to get better audio in the field if you can. So those are my top 10 tricks for faking good video. Just please don't tell anyone that this came from me. It's, it's much better to be professional. Plan your shoot, round up the necessary gear, and make sure it looks right the first time. But as a backup, it's nice to have these tricks up your sleeve.